Valley Mole. Hi, I'm David Smith and this is Valley Mole, the show that digs in and around Silicon Valley, searching for insights into technology news stories, the patent wars, and the business of startups. So, President Obama just signed in the new patent reform bill, which was actually approved by and supported by both sides of the House. Uh, in response to a general consensus that the patent system was somehow broken. Um, and this was the first time in almost 60 years that the patent system in the US has been reformed by legislators. Um, the system has been around since the Constitution and has changed actually relatively very little or at a glacial pace since that time. So, Let's first look at what the reforms do not do, because I think they could have actually made some radical reforms here, and they didn't actually do that. Um, they did not alter the way that damages uh, or injunctions or other remedies for patent infringement are to be assessed. Um, they did not set any special treatment for certain types of patents, like medical patents or software patents, for example. Um, they did not do anything radical like say that the patent holder has to practice the invention in order to then bring a lawsuit against an infringer for infringement. These would be radical reforms and none of those types of things were seen in, the, uh, in the, this reform bill. What the reform bill does, the most significant impact is that it changes the US system from a first to invent to a first file system and really harmonizes the US with the rest of the world in that regard. The rest of the world had a system where if you want to file a, uh, have a patent awarded basically you have to race to the patent office and file it first. The US had a different system that was based on the first to invent. You could only uh, have the patent awarded if you actually were the first to invent. And um, other uh, more minor reforms here, one of them um, means that the, one of the provisions allows for the patent office to retain the fees that are paid by the patent applicants to use in prosecuting those patents. Previously, those fees were paid and they were used by government departments in all sorts of areas. And then the patent system developed long queues and was very... Um, inefficient because they didn't have the funding but the funding now that is going into the patent system by the patent patentees is going to be retained for use in filing patents which is an important step. Um, also the patent office partly because of the shift to a first to a file system is going to be able to settle more disputes that no longer have to go to the uh, federal district courts in the US. Some of those disputes about who was first can be settled at the patent office. And um, another reform um, is related to patent holders filing suits against multiple parties, multiple infringers. Previously, the patent holder had, could file one lawsuit and identify multiple infringers in the one suit. Now, the, the system forces the patent holder to file a separate lawsuit against each infringer. Now, let's look at the most significant system. In the current system, which will be with us for the ne next 18 months until this reform comes into force, um, the US follows a first to invent process where the patent is awarded to the inventor that requests a patent and actually is proven to be the first to invent. Now what this means is that once a patent's been issued, if there's later a finding that that inventor was not in fact the first to invent that uh, invention, um, then the patent was invalidated. This is known as prior art. And the this meant that many patents that have actually been issued are later invalidated on the basis of prior art. And something like half of the patents that are litigated are invalidated in the litigation process and most of the invalidation uh, is due to findings of prior art. So, under the new system, 
This comes into force in 18 months. The US, like the rest of the world, follows the first to file. And it means there is a race to the patent office to file a patent once you have an invention. And, but the issued patent is somewhat less fragile. It's not automatically knocked out and invalidated by a finding of prior art later on. Now, implications for inventors. Um, basically, if you have an invention and you want it patented, file an application. Don't tell anyone about it because they could race to the patent office and file it before you. If you do tell someone about the invention before you file the application, get them under NDA. Um, it's not really that difficult. If you want a patent, like everywhere else in the world, file an application. Um, now, there could be an effect, I believe, on patent value uh, because the threat of invalidation of the patent on a finding of uh, prior art is somewhat reduced. It means the value of the patent is more robust, it's less fragile, uh, it's less speculative as to the value of the patent. So I think it could see, generally, an increase in the value of patents. Um, it's not going to be a huge increase, but maybe a slight increase, because some of the speculation is taken out of the valuation. Um, now, this uh, provision dealing with joinder of unrelated parties. Now, under the new regulation, this actually has already come into force. The patent um, holder cannot join multiple parties in one lawsuit, um, but they have to file separate suits. Now, generally this kind of means copying and pasting uh, one lawsuit and joining, instead of joining uh, five parties in the same suit, you file several, five different suits. Um, but in actual fact, what will happen in most cases is when the court gets these suits, the court will join those parties themselves anyway, because they don't want to have a huge burden and have five lawsuits that all have similar patent claims and generally a lot of similar evidence. So many of those cases will be joined by the court instead of being joined um, in the original lawsuit. Now, there's been some um, speculation in the press about whether this will stifle innovation and whether this will affect startup businesses. They're hurt by everyone else. I really don't see any justification for that. Um, if you want to have an application, uh, have a, a patent issued, then you can file a provisional application. It doesn't cost a great deal. It's not a lot of money. Even an independent inventor or a, a small startup company can file an application. And once you've filed the application, or the, the provisional application is even cheaper, uh, that gives you 12 months to then file the full patent application. You can then talk about the invention with your investors and everyone else. So I don't see it's, a, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to prefer large companies to small ones. I really don't see it stifling innovation or the startup process at all. Now, one of the questions is, what effect will this have on the patent wars? And um, I really don't see that it's going to stop or slow down the litigation that's taking place right now between large patent holders in any way. It may see, you may see some of the load shifted from the district courts to the patent office where those cases can be heard. Um, and you may see that prior art as a defense in patent litigation will become less important. But basically, this is not going to slow down the patent wars. Uh, so, patent reforms, um, they're changing the process of filing patents, and that probably is important if you're a patent agent or you're a, a patentee filing your own patents. You need to understand what those changes are. Um, you have 18 months to prepare, really, to, to use the new system. Um, they're not going to curtail the patent wars. Uh, they're not going to change the role of patents in Silicon Valley and the technology sector. So I really don't see any huge impact of the current uh, patent reforms on Silicon Valley and the tech sector. We'd like to thank the sponsors of Valley Mole. Tynax, the full-service patent broker, operating the world's largest technology trading exchange. Silicon Valley Business School, the unique online resource for students and teachers of entrepreneurship, 
high-tech law and technology commercialization and valuemypatent.com the only place to go for rapid, realistic online patent appraisals.